Hello, I'm Jarrell Cummings, and you are watching Freedom Online. We are so glad that you're tuned in tonight. Thank you for taking the time out on a Wednesday evening to prioritize the Word of God. We're in person again this Wednesday night, so I know we're just getting started, but if you're in the Tampa area, we're trying to hit all four points of the city. So just follow us on social media, stay connected with, with what we're doing, and, uh, and hopefully we'll be coming to a side of town where you are on and you can bring your family and friends. We have people with us tonight and we're excited. And all of you viewing online, thank you again for tuning in to receive God's word. We're in a series and we're titling this series Upon the Waters, Upon the Waters. And the reason that we titled it Upon the Waters is because Psalms 29, verse 3, if you have your Bible, I want you to put your eyes here, since I have a live crowd tonight, <clears throat> but I want you to put your eyes on this, Psalm 29, and verse 3. And I know that some of you, this is your first time hearing me, and that's fine. We're not going to lose any of you. <clears throat> Everybody is going to be able to receive tonight and get the Word of God. So Psalm 29, and verse 3, when you have it, Say, I have it. Amen. Amen. All right. So notice what he says here. He says, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. It goes on to say that the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the water. So notice what he's saying here. He's saying that the voice of the Lord is on the waters. Now, what is the water? The water, of course, would be the Word of God. It's the Word of God. The Bible tells us clearly in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, that the water is the Word of God. And then also in Isaiah 55, these are just reference scriptures, but Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11, it says that just as rain comes down from, the earth, from heaven and waters the earth, so God's Word waters our lives. So the Word of God is likened to water. Somebody say the Word of God, word of God. Is, water. is water. When I say water, you say word. Water, word. water. Word. When I say word, you say water. Word, water. word. Water. Amen. So the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. We could say it this way. The voice of the Lord is in the Word. Amen? Amen. So we, uh, we, we started, we got here because we showed you eight secrets to accessing the voice of God. We started that series back in August of 2022, and we showed you how to tune in to hear God's voice. We gave you eight secrets to hearing the voice of God. Now, it's one thing for God to speak to you. It's another thing for you to recognize that it is God speaking to you. Now, that's huge because there are people in it who believe, well, if God spoke to me, I would know it. Well, that's not true. And all of us can bear witness when we heard something, we perceived something in our heart, and then we went contrary to that. And what do we always say? After everything fell down, after all the stuff hit the fan, what do we say? Something told me not to do that, or I should have done that, correct? And so it is, it, it's not guaranteed that just because God is speaking to you that you're going to recognize. Now, we didn't say hear. You can hear, but you don't know always that it's God speaking to you. Amen? And this is what the Bible says. You don't have to turn there. Job 33, verse 14. Again, this is just a reference. We're going through a review just to make sure we, we kind of catch everybody up. But Job 33, 14, New Living Translation is most clear for me. And he says this, God speaks again and again. Watch this. But people don't recognize it. So God is speaking to us all the time, again and again. You hear the voice of God. But what our problem is many times, we don't recognize that it's God. Amen. And so from there, we moved on to uh, the, the, the next part in our series. And we began to talk about the three ways, primary ways that God does speak. 
In other words, if God's speaking to us, how can I recognize it? So we showed you three ways. Number one, God speaks to you through. Now, now let me say this for all of you watching online and for everybody here tonight. These are not the only ways. What did I say? These are not the only ways. Because you might be listening and say, no, God speaks to us. Yeah, I agree. I'm just trying to cover three primary ways that God speaks to his people today. And number one, he speaks to, and this is not in any specific order, but he speaks to his people today through visions and dreams. Amen. He gives visions and dreams, not just dreams in the night, but dreams in your heart. Maybe when you were young, maybe now as you're older, he gives you a dream, a vision for your life of where, what he has for you to do and where he wants you to go. A dream, not just sleeping dreams, but dreams or visions for your life. Amen. God can put a dream in your heart. Amen. Desires in your heart. So he speaks to us through visions and dreams, and we showed you nine ways, and I would encourage you to listen to this, it's a really good message, but we showed you nine ways to test if a vision or dream is from God. Nine ways to test if a vision or dream is from God. In other words, is it your vision and your dream, just something you thought up, or is it coming from God? So we gave you nine ways to test that. Now, the second way that God speaks to his people today, primary, is through the Holy Spirit. Somebody should say the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Now, the voice of the Holy Spirit, does anybody remember? The voice of the Holy Spirit is the, does anybody remember? No? Nobody online? What? The voice of the Holy Spirit is the voice of God. And no, it is God's voice. The voice of the Holy Spirit is the inward witness. witness. That's how the Holy Spirit speaks to you. Through an inward witness, a Peace, a green light, a go ahead. <clears throat> he bears witness with your spirit. He gives you a head nod, a peace, an assurance, a green light to move in this direction. No peace, don't go. If it's a green light, go. If it's a red light, don't go. If it's yellow, proceed with caution. <laughs> Amen. If you're dating somebody and he's fine, his hair is wavy, he's tall, dark, and man, fine and just your kind. But the Holy Spirit gives you a yellow light. Don't let the waves fool you. Proceed with caution. Amen. Proceed with caution. So he speaks through the inward witness. And then finally, the third way that God speaks to us today is through his word. That is the dominant way that God speaks to his people today. And that's why we're in this series now upon the water. The water is the word. And where is God's voice heard? Psalm 29, 3 declares his voice is upon what? The water. The water would be the word. Notice what part B of Psalm 29 says. His voice thunders, meaning his voice is clear, booming loud. If you want to hear God, come to the water of the word because that's where he's thundering. He's speaking loud and clear to his people. Amen? Amen. So that's the series that we've been in for the last, I think, six weeks upon the waters. Now, when you're reading your Bible, I want you to hear me closely. When you're reading your Bible, God, every time you read your Bible, God wants to speak to you. Every time you read your Bible, God wants to speak to you. His voice is on the water. If you come to the water, you'll hear his voice thunder every time. Now, how can you tell when God is speaking to you as you read the Bible? See, I'm just trying to go as deep as we can go, as layer by layer. So in other words, let's say I'm reading my Bible. Let's say I read a chapter a day or two chapters a day. Whatever it is, your devotion, of it doesn't matter. Whatever it is that you read. How can I tell when I'm reading my Bible that, that God, how do I know when God is trying to get my attention? Or how do I know when God is speaking to me? Well, hold on. Let me fix it up for a second, all right? So here, here, here's how we know. He gives you, I'm, gonna give, I'm giving you seven ways. Seven ways to tell. They all begin with the letter E. Seven ways to tell that God is speaking to you. 
Seven ways. Amen. So number one was enlightenment. Now, I don't have time to go through all of these and reteach re these. But number one, he, he speaks to you through enlightenment. He speaks to you through enjoyment. He speaks to you through um, all of these E's. Enlightenment, enjoyment. Does anybody remember? Ecstasy. Entertainment. Ecstasy. We're in ecstasy tonight. We're going to do part two of that tonight. We started that yesterday. Entertainment, engagement, mm -hmm. right? When you sense uh, a desire to pray. So we can cover all of the, these E's. We're not going to go through them now. We're on number six tonight. He speaks to you through ecstasy. When you're reading the Bible, be sensitive to the feeling of joy. Ecstasy, you know, we just had to use an E word, but the word ecstasy, all it means, the definition, we're not talking about the drug you might have taken when you were younger. We're talking about, we're talking about uh, uh, the, the true definition of the word ecstasy literally means a feeling of very great happiness. That's all it is. It's a feeling of happiness. When you're reading the Bible, be sensitive to the feeling when you perceive, when you feel joy. That's God speaking to you. When you feel joy as you read the Bible, that is God speaking to you. It says, this is very important that you get this. Amen? Amen? When you feel joy come in your heart as you're reading the Bible, God is trying to get your attention. And this is where we want to take off from tonight. We started this last week, but I have so much that I want to show you about this because this is so important. Turn with me to Psalm. Let's show you this now. Psalm 119 and look with me at verse 162. I'm going to read this to you out of the New Living Translation. Psalm 119, verse 162. Psalm 119, verse 162. And when you have it, say, I have it. Amen. Psalm, Psalm 119, verse 162. Okay. So when you're reading your Bible, let's make sure we're all on the same page. I don't want to go too quick and lose you. But when you're reading the Bible, we're trying to give you seven ways to recognize when God is speaking to you. His voice is on the water. It's in the word. God, when you come to the Bible, God is going to speak to you. But how can you recognize it? One of the ways to recognize when God is speaking is joy. When joy is stirred. When joy comes in your heart, that's God trying to get your attention. He's, he's ready to speak. He is communicating with you. Now watch this. Psalm 119 verse 162 in the New Living Translation. He says, I rejoice in your word. Why? Like one who discovers a great treasure. So notice he's in the word of God and he begins to what? Rejoice. He's in his Bible and he begins rejoicing over the word. Now, why is he rejoicing? Listen to me, because he has discovered great treasure. Can everybody see that? Yes. I rejoice in your word as one who discovers great treasure. So when he discovers great treasure, the moment you discover great treasure, the signal that you've discovered great treasure is joy. God's word is a treasure. Let me, let me say it like this. Um, let's say you had a metal detector and you were on the beach and you were scanning for treasure. Some kind of metal coin, whatever it is. You're, you see people like that on the beach all the time. Okay. What's the signal on the metal detector that you've come across metal? A solid beep. Okay, listen to me. God's word is a treasure. You read until you perceive a solid beep. That's how you know you've come upon the treasure. Stop right there. That solid beep indicating that you've discovered the treasure is joy. 
Do, do, do you understand what I'm saying, Damon? So if I was physically on the beach with a metal detector, how do I know if I've discovered treasure? I'll get a solid beep. When I'm in the Word of God and I discover treasure, how do I know? Joy. That's the solid beep. Are, are you following me? Now, just stick with me. I'm taking you somewhere. I know you're, you're, you're trying to connect this. I'm going to connect it for you. I'm not going to lose any of you. Just, just stick with me verse by verse. So he says, when, I dis when I'm in your word, the moment I discover treasure, the signal is joy. Can everybody see that? It's like a metal detector. If I'm scanning, 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 do 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 I know that there's metal there. When I'm in the Word, I'm reading, 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 do 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 Joy comes. That's God's voice. Now he's talking to me. You read until you get the solid beep, which is joy. Are you with me? So when you perceive joy, that is God speaking to you. Can everybody see that? That's God speaking to you. Now. The treasure that you find, indicated by joy, the treasure is God's voice. So you're reading until you perceive joy. Let's say you're having a tough day. Let's say you read when you get home, your kids go to bed, your wife goes to bed. You had a stressed out day. You take your shower. You sit down and you're reading. Read until you perceive joy because joy is indicative of God speaking to you. It's the solid beep. Now, what is the great treasure? Here it is. Listen to me. The great treasure. Listen to me closely. Let me say this. The reason you feel joy is because you've discovered great treasure. And the great treasure that you've discovered is knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Okay, just follow me. This is progressive. So as you get into the Word of God, you're looking for the solid beep of joy. Once that solid beep of joy comes, it's because you've discovered the great treasure of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Are you with me? Now go look with me. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. I promise you I'm taking you somewhere. Just stick with me. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. All right, watch this. Proverbs 2, verse 1 through 4 in the King James. Let's show you that the treasure is knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. That's all we're trying to show you. Because when you're in the Word... You're, you're looking for the great treasure. What's the great treasure? Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. How do I know when I've come across that great treasure? I'm going to feel joy. How do I know when I've come to discover knowledge, wisdom, and understanding? I'm going to feel joy. Are you with me? Okay, now watch. Verse 1, Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if you will receive my words. Somebody say the word of God. And hide my commandments with thee, so that you incline your ear, watch this, wisdom, incline your ear to wisdom, apply your heart to understanding, yea, if you cry after knowledge. We see three, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Now watch what he calls this, verse 4, seek her, or seek these things as silver and search for them as what? Hid treasure. Now, what did he say in Psalms? He said, I'm trying to discover the treasure in your word. What's the treasure? Wisdom, knowledge, understanding. How do I know when I've stumbled upon the treasure? Joy. I rejoice when I come ac across the treasure. That's the solid beep. Okay, now, listen to me closely. We're going to connect it to the voice of God. Listen to me. The treasure of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that comes as you're reading the Bible. Indicative, you know when you come upon this treasure, when you feel joy. That's the solid beep. Listen to me. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding comes only... When God speaks to you. Look at verse 6. Verse 6. Watch this. For the Lord 
gives what? Wisdom. Wisdom. Watch this. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. You see all three of them? Mm -hmm. What is the treasure? Verse 1 through 4 said the treasure was wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. How does this treasure come? When he opens his mouth, when he speaks. Mm -hmm. What are you searching for in the word of God? The treasure. What's the treasure? Wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Where does wisdom and knowledge and understanding come from? His mouth. Listen to me. When you're in the word, you read until you stumble upon the treasure of his words, his mouth, his voice, filling you with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And you will know when you stumbled on the treasure because your heart will be filled with joy. That's the solid beep. You keep scanning, do 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 that's joy. Right there, stay in that place. God is trying to give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to change that situation, to fix something in your life, to promote you, to prosper you, to do something big in your life. Once, once you hear the solid beep, start digging. Don't keep reading. Oh no, Lord, don't talk to me now, I gotta finish the chapter. No, start digging. Don't keep searching. That's the treasure. Are, are you with me? The, you read until you perceive joy. You read, how do you, someone says, well, how do I know? I'm not against daily Bible reading plans. I'm not against that at all. I'm not against any of that. But make sure when you're reading, you're not doing it just to fulfill a quota but you're searching for the hidden treasure. What's the hidden treasure? Knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Here's another way to say it. His voice. Because knowledge, wisdom, and understanding only comes when he speaks. You read until he speaks to you. And you'll know when he speaks to you because joy is the solid beep that I've stumbled upon treasure. Stop, start digging. Now let's, I wanna show you now, what does knowledge, wisdom, and understanding give you? I could say it another way, Lenny. What does his voice give you? Well, in addition to the joy, it's the answers that you're looking for. It's the answers. I wanna give you, I wanna give you guys, uh, I wanna show you seven things that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding gives. Is everybody with me though so far? Is everybody with me? Yeah. When you're in the Bible, what did the psalmist say? He said, I'm searching for treasure. Mm -hmm. And I'll know when I've come to the treasure because I'll start to feel joy. Mm -hmm. And the treasure is knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. But they only come when God speaks. So what does it all boil down to? I'm staying in the word until I hear from God. Until joy fills my heart. Once joy comes in your heart, it's because knowledge, wisdom, and understanding are in your heart. That's what I'm trying to get you to see. When joy is stirred, when you start rejoicing, it's because God is speaking knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. The reason you're happy, the reason joy is there is because now you, can, you have wisdom for what to do. You have knowledge for how to fix this situation. You have understanding of what the issue is going on with your, with your children. You don't know what's going on with them, but now God speaks. So now joy comes. Joy is there. Because you have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Now, these three things, what do they give you? That's where we're going to spend the rest of our time tonight. I want to give you seven things that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding gives you. Seven gifts of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Go to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. How are the people online doing, Damien? Are they, are they following me? You guys watching online, are you following me? Are you understanding this? 
Let us know. Talk to us. Be interactive with us. Let us know you got it, okay? Colossians chapter 1. I want you to see how important knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is. Is everybody with me? Yes. Okay. Now watch this. Colossians chapter 1, verse, we're going to read verse uh, 9. Okay, and then we're going to look at seven gifts of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Okay, Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. Look at how important knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is. For this cause, this is Paul praying for the church at Coloss. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual, watch this, understanding. Can you see all three? Mm -hmm. Knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Everybody see it? Yes. Okay. Now, notice what Paul does not pray. You see, if you were to come to the average Christian today and we were going to record a prayer for you, from you and put it in the Bible, the average Christian would pray, oh, God, bless these wonderful people. Oh, God, heal their family. God, provide money for them. God, give them strength. Oh, God, we'd be begging. Paul says, give them three things. Knowledge, wisdom, understanding, because these three things are the treasures of God. Can, is everybody with me? It's the treasure. Everything you want is in knowledge. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Okay? Now, what seven things come as a result of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding? We could say it this way. What seven things come as a result of his voice? You with me? You see that, right? Because out of his mouth comes Knowledge, wisdom, understanding. You got it, Lenny? What seven gifts come? Number, number one. I'm going to give all seven to you right now, quickly, and then we'll see them in, in verse 10 through 14. They all begin with F. You ready? Number one, faith. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding provide faith. <coughs> number two, fruitfulness. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding give you the ability to be fruitful. Number three, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding afford you or they give you further knowledge. Further knowledge. Number four, fortitude. Number five, fortune. We don't just mean money there. You'll see what I mean. I just had to use an F word. Fortune. Number six, freedom. Number seven, forgiveness. Now let's show you these things right now, all of them together, okay? And then we'll study these out a little bit. Watch this. Look at verse 9. For this cause, we also, since the day that we heard, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will, knowledge, in all Wisdom and spiritual understanding. Why? Verse 10. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. That's faith. Someone says, how? Hebrews 11.6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Listen to me, child of God. When knowledge, wisdom, and understanding fill your heart, faith goes into action. You begin to walk worthy of the Lord. You begin to please the Lord. How do you please God? Hebrews eleven six. 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So if you're pleasing God, it's because you are living a life of faith. Notice what's the source of a life of faith. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Once faith starts working, the promises of God start coming to pass. I don't care what mountain is in your way. 
the moment faith starts working, your, your mountain is removed. But faith works by knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Faith isn't hearing what someone else said and then saying, oh, well, God did it for them. God will do it for me. No, faith comes in your heart when you've heard from God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing from God. What, what produces wisdom, knowledge, and understanding? Out of his mouth. His mouth is what produces <coughs> and gives us the ability to live worthy and to walk pleasing and to live by faith. And once you're living by faith, you start living by victory. So here's the second one. We said the second one was fruitfulness. Watch this. <clears throat> verse, verse 10. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. Can everybody see that? Fruitfulness. Can you see that? Fruitfulness. What does knowledge, wisdom, and understanding provide? Number one, you start pleasing God. That's faith. Number two, you start to become fruitful. Fruitful. This is what this needs to be your prayer. If you're a member of the Freedom Center or a partner of the Freedom Center, I pray this over you daily. This is what I pray over you, that God would fill you with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual, not intellectual understanding. Not what the university gives, but what only God can give spiritual understanding. Why? So that now your faith can start working. When your faith is working, mountains move. When your faith is working, you walk on the water. When your faith is working, you live in victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world. How many of you are facing things in this world? We all are. How do you overcome them? This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. When you start living by faith, you start overcoming. But notice, you can't live by faith unless you have knowledge, wisdom, understanding, which is coming from his mouth. Amen? Amen. So you start living by faith, you start to become fruitful in every good work. I'll say it this way. God's goodness begins to work. And when God's goodness starts working, you start producing fruit. Amen? Amen? God wants you to be fruitful. He doesn't want you to be barren. He wants you to bring forth fruit. He wants you to be productive. Amen? Amen. And that's what knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is affording you. The ability to be fruitful, not in every bad work, but in every good work. Every good thing starts working in your life when you have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Now, here's the third one. Here's where we're going to dig a little bit. Further knowledge. Further knowledge comes. How many of you know, you know, uh, I have four, well, my fourth child is on its way, on her, she's coming. But I have three here. And when we had our first child, we, I, we would, I almost didn't want to put them to sleep sometimes because I wanted them to sleep at night. And my wife would tell me, she would say, no, 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 no. Sleep. And all of you mothers know this. Sleep begets sleep. Nap them. Put them down when they're supposed to. Because just because you keep them up doesn't mean they're going to sleep later. They're going to still wake up at the same time. Sleep, and all you mothers know, sleep begets sleep as a child. Listen to me. Knowledge produces or begets more knowledge. It's progressive. It's just like school. You can't learn algebra until you learn your, your plus, you know, one plus one, right? So knowledge begets more knowledge. Now watch what Paul says here, and then we're going to dig a little on this one. So he says, to be fruitful in every good work, now watch the third thing, increasing. Somebody say furtherance. furtherance. Increasing in the knowledge of God. That's the third one. You start to go further in your knowledge of God. Now, what? This might not make you happy. This might not excite you. Furtherance of knowledge of God. What happens when you have furtherance of the knowledge of God? What can you do when you understand, when you have knowledge of God and how the kingdom of God works? Watch this. Go to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. Listen to me. This is going to bless you. 
Oh my goodness. Are you guys with me so far? Okay. I pray. I hope I'm not losing you guys. This is really good stuff if you can get this. Now watch this. 2 Peter chapter 1, look at verse 3. Look at verse 3. When you have it, say, I have it. Okay, watch. I want you to see this. 2 Peter chapter 1, look at verse 3. He says, according as his divine power. That's God's power. Divine means God. God's power. Notice what God has done through his power. He has given us some things. All things. A few things. No. God has given unto us all things that pertain to, watch this, life. Life. That's your house, your car, your kids going to college, your body being healthy. Sickness and disease touches you, it dies. That pertains to life. And look at this, godliness. That's spiritual things. There's two sides. He has given to us all things that pertain to the physical, which would be life, and the spiritual, which would be what? Godliness. God is a spirit. John 4, 24. So God has given you everything spiritually and physically. In this life, you have bills that need to be paid. You have Food you need to eat, water you need to drink, clothes you need to wear. Those are just the three things Jesus used, right? Don't take thought what you will eat. Don't take thought what you will put on. Don't take thought. We could've, he could have kept going. He could have talked about your mortgage. He could have talked about everything. He was saying in this life, you have needs, necessities, things that need to be done. Notice what God said. I will give my power has supplied you with all. Not some. If you're barely making ends meet, take this verse of scripture. All things, 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 things. What do you need? Maybe you need a new car. Maybe you need to be able to pay for your kids to go to school. Maybe you need to replace something in your vehicle. Maybe you need, maybe you want to help a loved one, a neighbor, a friend. Maybe you have nephews that you want to be a blessing to. All things that pertain to this life and godliness, spiritual stuff, he has provided. But just because God has provided doesn't mean you're going to benefit from it. The majority of Christians are not living under the provision of what God's power has given them. Let me say it another way. Uh, the majority of Christians are not enjoying all things that God's power has given them in this life. There are Christians everywhere who are living in lack in their finances, who are sick in their body, who are depressed defeated, discouraged, full of fear, full of anxiety. Christians everywhere have the same fears that their unsaved neighbors have. They deal with the same debts, financial trouble uh, that the, their, their unsaved neighbors have. They deal with the same sicknesses that people who don't know God deal with. There is a difference between someone who's alive which you are, I have come, Jesus said that you might have life and have it more abundantly. There's a difference between someone who's alive and someone who's dead. Physically, you can tell someone that's dead is not the same as someone that's alive. You are living. They are dead. You are light. They are darkness. You are a holy nation separated. That doesn't mean you're weird that you, you know, you don't put makeup on. You don't, you only wear pants. No, he, when he says holy, he means you're, you're separate. You're uncommon. When they're sick, you're here. When there's darkness in Goshen, when there's darkness in Egypt, there should be light in Goshen. When they're confused, you should have wisdom. When they're fearful, you should be calm. When a thousand fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, it's not supposed to come near you. That's what the Bible promises. His power has provided you this life, but not every Christian lives it. Why? Watch what he goes on to say. Look at this. He says, he says in verse, I lost my spot. Second Peter chapter one, right? Verse three. Look at what he says. He says, according as his divine power has given unto us. God has already given. He's not going to give. 
You don't need to pray and ask God to do something for you like a beggar. You need to understand, have knowledge and receive wisdom on how to receive from God. Amen. He doesn't need to do anything else. It's already done. Jesus is not saving anybody today. He's not healing anybody today. He's not providing finances for anybody today. Someone says, I thought he was. I need those things. No, he's already done it. He's already provided forgiveness of sins for the sinner. He's already provided financial prosperity for those who are in lack. He's already healed past tense with his stripes. When was he striped? At the cross 2,000 years ago, you were already healed. Today, he's not doing those things. What's happening today? People are simply appropriating, receiving, believing, and accepting what he did. You don't have to act. Paul did not pray that God would do things for them. He prayed that they would become wise, understand, and have knowledge of what he's done. You don't need God to heal you today. You were healed. You just need to know what's been done. Understand how to receive it and receive wisdom on how to appropriate it. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. So look. So uh, according as his divine power has given unto us, given past tense unto us. It doesn't say some. It doesn't say the preachers, the elect saints, the, the high most potate saint. It doesn't say the saint that never makes a mistake. It says he's given unto us all, all, all things that pertain to this. There's nothing in this life that God did not already foreknow was going to happen and he already made the prayer. He already gave it to you. Amen. You say, God, I have cancer. He already gave you the healing. You just need to understand that you, how to get it, how to appropriate it. Do you understand? Yes. So look, so he says, according to his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and God, how does it come to you now? Through, through, through praying for it. He didn't say that begging for it. He didn't say that trying to live a perfect life and not cross, not making it. He didn't say that. He said it's through what knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Many Christians think God has called them to gory. In other words, you walk with God, your life is going to get worse. It's gory, not glory. If I serve God, my life is going downhill. I'll never serve God. There are people that God has called to do things. They don't want to do it because it's going to be gory. God said he has called you to glory and virtue. You know what virtue is? Excellence. God has called you to excel in life. God has called you to live a glorious life. What's the problem? You don't know that. That's what he's saying. He has already provided you everything. The problem is you don't know. Ignorance is killing you. It, if ignorance is bliss, she's never heard of this. She's never heard of 1 Peter, 2 Peter 1, 3. Because ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance, what you don't know is killing you. Amen. Amen. God has already given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. But how does it come? Through knowledge. Not by living a perfect life. Not because you did this, did that. No. It comes because you know. Amen? What does Paul pray? That you be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom, spiritual understanding. What are the three things? First thing we see? Faith comes. You start pleasing God. So faith starts rising up in your heart. You start to become fruitful. Watch this. You begin to increase in knowledge or further you're not. What can you do once knowledge starts increasing? What can you do when knowledge starts increasing? I'll tell you what you can do. You can start withdrawing all the things that his divine power has already given you in this life. In this life. Amen. All right. Let's let's hurry up. OK, now watch this. Number four. What's the fourth thing it gives you? Fortitude. Fortitude. Or we would say Mighty strength, mighty strength. Look at this. Verse 11, that you be strengthened, 
Notice, these are all the things that come as a result of him praying for the, the church to be filled with knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Verse 11, here's the fourth thing, that you be strengthened with all might. That's fortitude. Mighty strength. He's praying that God would give you mighty strength. What can you do with mighty strength? I'm going to tell you, don't even wonder. I'm going to tell you what you can do with mighty strength. Go to Ephesians chapter 3, a verse we all know. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. But you probably never connected these two before. Man, I tell you, the only thing you ever need, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. All you need is to hear from God. Out of his mouth comes knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. When you read your Bible, you stay in your Bible until you get those treasures. You're searching for the hid treasure, and you know when you arrive at those hid treasures because your heart will become joyful. Right now, you feel joy coming. Right now, it, it, you feel joy. You may have walked in there tired. You know, oh, we're coming to church. But now joy because you're, God is speaking to you. Right. He's given you knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Amen? Amen? Now watch this. Ephesians, what can you do with mighty strength? Isn't that what he said he would give you? Mm -hmm. If you have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, you'd begin to walk in mighty strength. Right? The strength of his might. What can you do with mighty strength? Look at this. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. And we got to hurry up. Ephesians 3. Verse 16, look at this. He says that he would, everybody there? Yeah. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Look at this. To be strengthened with what church? I mean, Ephesians 3, verse 16, King James. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. To be strengthened yeah. with what? Power. Might. Power. Might. Might. What did Paul say happens when knowledge, wisdom, and understanding come? You're strengthened with might. Right? Mighty strength. What can you do once mighty strength comes into you, Damien? Look at this. He prays for them that you be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. What happens when mighty strength comes in you? Verse 20. Now unto him. Verse 20. Everyone knows verse 20, but no one knows how to unlock verse 20. Verse 20 is unlocked. Through the mighty strength of God and mighty strength is the result. It's the child of wisdom, knowledge and understanding. A, a wise man is strong. Yea, a wise man increases strength. Proverbs 24. Wisdom is what makes uh, wisdom is what gives might. Amen. Look at what he says. Now unto him. Why is God now able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask? In other words, stop begging. The, the church, this is where the church is. They're asking, oh, God, help me. Oh, God, I'm poor. Oh, God, my aunt is dying. Oh, God, help. God is saying, no, what you need is knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Then you'll become strong with might. And now I'm able to do above what you're asking. It's not about begging me. Above what you're asking. Above what you think. According to the power that's working in you. According to the power. How did you get that power? When he strengthened you with it. Once that power comes, now he's able. Now we know why there are many Christians who aren't living in this mighty power. Because they don't have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And how does that come? When God speaks. And how do you know when God's speaking? Joy. You feel joy right now. Some of you walked in here, don't even know who I am. But now you're feeling joy because God is speaking to you. Amen. Amen. Say this with me. God. Is able, is able to do exceeding, exceeding. abundantly Amen. above Amen. all that I could ask, all, all that I could think through power. power. It's power that has to start working. Amen. You got to get that power to work, that mighty strength. How does that work? Through knowledge, wisdom, understanding. That's what you need to be praying for. Oh, not, oh God, heal me. Oh God, give me understanding of how to receive your healing. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's, uh, all right, uh, number five, fortune, fortune, fortune. We got like two minutes. Let's hurry up and finish this up. Go back to Colossians, fortune. What do we mean by fortune? Colossians chapter one, don't let a fortune offend you. I'm not just talking about money. I just had to use an F word. Here's fortune. Look at this, verse 11. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power. Skip down to verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father. He has now made us meet. To partake of what? 
our inheritance. That's fortune. You're fortunate to be children of God. And now because you're children, he's laid up for you what? An inheritance, an inheritance of peace, joy, healing, prosperity, wisdom. You're, we've talked about the inheritance. Your inheritance is rich. I don't even have time to go into it. But he, your inheritance is all things that pertain to this life. Your inheritance is healing. Hell, but notice how you start partaking, not by begging for it. He says you start partaking when you're filled with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. The reason Christians aren't enjoying their inheritance is because they don't know better. They're beggars. They're not sons. They, they positionally are, but they don't know they are. Amen? Amen? They're not acting like they are. Sickness comes on us. We tolerate it. We go to the doctor. We get medication. We treat it. We do all. And I'm not against that. If it wasn't for the doctors, all the Christians would be dead. But we don't come to God and say, no, 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 I'm a son. Get your nasty hands off me. Sickness. Can't. I'm a son of light. Not of darkness. That stuff is in darkness. I'm a son of light. Amen. Amen. All right. And then the last one, fortune. Uh, the last one is uh, freedom. We actually have two more freedom. Look at this. Who has delivered us from verse 13. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness. When you're delivered from Satan's power, darkness, because you're a son of light. Guess what that's called? Freedom. Freedom. You're supposed to live in freedom. You're not supposed to live under the power of darkness. You are light. You are not in the darkness. You are light. The blessings of God are in the light. What is the light? The word is a light unto our path. Whatever the word promises, that's what is, your, is in your inheritance. Whatever is not in the word, whatever counters the word, that's what's dark. Sickness is dark. Poverty is dark. Bitterness is dark. Confusion is dark. Depression is dark. You're not in that. We walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We don't live there. Amen. 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 Okay, and then the last one is forgiveness. Realize, understand, have knowledge that you're forgiven, that you're blessed, that God loves you, that no matter what you've done, he's with you. Verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Look at this. What is redemption? The forgiveness of every sin. The forgiveness of of every sin. Now that your sins are forgiven, the blessings of God belong to you. That's what God wants you to understand, that you're forgiven. I, have a, I feel like I should read this verse to you. Go to Isaiah 33. Forgiveness is the last thing God wants you to have knowledge of, of. He wants you to understand. Many of you understand that intellectually, but it's not in your heart. You're still guilty of things you've done. Even if it was earlier today, you're forgiven. What happens when your sins are forgiven? Last verse, Isaiah 33. <clears throat> Isaiah 33. Look at this. I just, this wasn't in my notes, but I feel in my heart to read this to you. Isaiah 33. Are you guys getting this tonight? Yeah. Man, I apologize for yelling on a Wednesday night. Look at this. <laughs> Isaiah 33, verse 24. Look at what he says. What happens when your sins are forgiven? This is just one thing that happens. But I feel like I should read this. For some reason, I feel like I should read this. Verse 24, Isaiah 33, verse 24. When you have it, say, I have it. Watch this. And the inhabitants, this is talking about the people of God, those who are citizens in God's kingdom. The inhabitants will not say, look at this church, that I am sick. Can everybody see that? The inhabitants will not say that I am sick. Now, why does God promise that you won't be sick? Watch this. Because the people there shall be what? Forgiven of their iniquity. This is what God wants you to, if you truly understood that you were forgiven, sickness would have no play. It couldn't touch you. Whatever you're lacking, listen to me, if you're sick, you have a knowledge problem. If you're poor, you have a knowledge problem. If you're depressed, all, notice what he said, all things are given to us through knowledge. If you don't have all that his divine power has provided, it's because you have a knowledge problem. The, the knowledge is how you receive all the things he's given. If you don't have all things that pertain to this life, health, healing, prosperity, you have a knowledge problem. You are thinking wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying? Can everybody see that? Say this with me. Say, I'm not sick. I'm not sick. Because the word says, the word says. My, sins are my sins are forgiven. All right. Okay, 
I got to give you one last verse. I know the lady, we got five minutes. This is my last verse right here. Proverbs 24, verse 3 through 4. I just want to show you these three again, locked up together. Proverbs 24, quickly, turn there. It's easy to find Proverbs. Proverbs 24, look at this. Verse 3 through 4. Yes, ma'am. Okay, no problem. Thank you so much. And then, um, we'll need help with some of these chairs. We're going to put everything back. You rock. We are rocking. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We love you. <laughs> Look at this. Proverbs 24, verse 3 through 4. Last verses, and then I need everybody to help us break down, okay? Watch this. Proverbs 24, verse 3 through 4. When you have it, say, I have it. Have it. Well, look at this. All three of them together, and look at the results. Through wisdom is a house... Build it. Proverbs 24, verse 3 through 4. Through wisdom. Somebody shout wisdom. wisdom. Is a house that's talking about your family or your life. A house is built. How many of you want to see your life built up? Amen. You need wisdom. Through wisdom, a house is built. Watch this. By understanding, it is established. How many of you want to be established in the, the reality of God's word? You don't want to just read it. You want to experience it. How many of you want that? That, that comes through understanding. Now watch this, verse 4. And by knowledge shall the chambers, that's talking about each area of your life. A chamber is a room. Every area of your life, your health, your finances, your relationships, your emotions, the chambers of your life. Watch what he says. Through knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all. Somebody shout all. all. Precious and pleasant Riches. Notice what knowledge, wisdom, and understanding brings. Riches. The ri your inheritance. The blessings of God. The riches of Christ. Amen? Amen. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Father.